Hi, my name is Josie Menendez here with Cherry Picks, and it's so lovely to sit down with you both. Congratulations on the film and the premiere. Thank you so much. Thanks. I love Cherry Picks. Yeah. How are you both feeling right now? (laughs) (laughs) I think we're very overwhelmed. I think there's so many emotions. I think it's been like not a long time coming, but enough anticipation. So the fact that we're here is exciting and emotional and all the things. Yeah, we also, I think I fell asleep with like a chicken nugget in my mouth at 4 a.m. <laughs> so we're just tired, I think. But no, we're, we're still buzzing from last night. It was a really warm reception. So it really was. Yeah. I'm so glad to hear that. Um, and on to the film. From the color palette to the font choice and even the quotes at the beginning, you can tell that a lot of thought and care went into this film and into this story. Um, Molly, this question is for you. What came to you first? Was it the story itself, the message you wanted to share, or the main character? Um, The main character is based on me and my life, so (laughs) I guess the the character came from that. Um, But when I... When I brought Maddie onto the project, it no longer became just mine. I think it became ours. And, you know, Maddie and I have had very different experiences in the world. Um, But at the core, uh, Maddie really understood Lindy emotionally. Um, And it was really powerful to take something that was so personal and give it to someone else and to share it. And it is mine, but it becomes Maddie's too. And she made Lindy better than I could have ever imagined. Um, and in terms of the color palette and the credits and the music and all of that, um, I really wanted to play with notions of femininity and identity, but everything was sort of inverted. Um, it was sort of a modern exploration of what feminine femininity and womanhood is. So everything in the design kept that in mind. And also in terms of the color palette, Um, I wanted to keep it very bright and um, inviting to people. I think at first glance, the subject matter can appear like, oh God, you know, slog, like doctor's offices, all of that. But I wanted it to be a fun watch for people. Um, And, you know, we juxtaposed Lindy's world with the sort of harsh clinical look of the medical spaces. Um, And I think... um, when you're 16, the whole world is so, everything is so exaggerated anyway. So I wanted to feel that in the color palette. Mm. Yeah. So I spotted the Olivia Rodrigo poster on the wall and I was like, that production designer knew what they were doing. hundred percent. It was so funny too. Cause I was like, she's a good friend of mine. So it was funny to like, I'm excited when she sees it. I mean, if she notices she will but it's, it's hilarious. You should send her a frame grab when Maddie walked onto (laughs) set to her bedroom. She's like, Oh, that's my friend, Olivia. It's like, I'm freaking out. (laughs) She's like, no big deal. My friend, Olivia. I'm like, Olivia Rodrigo, like the album. Just letting you know you have a cameo. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I'm so happy. I mean, it, it is the most fitting. And especially like you said, you listen to that album, like in your breakup, it's so clot, like any teenage girl or just any girl in general. Or any adult woman. Yeah. Any adult woman. (laughs) The wide First range person, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think can relate and, and take that little aspect. Yeah. As well, Maddie, for you, you've had the opportunity to play such emotive characters with such death and vulnerability. Uh, did you find this character to go into familiar ground or were there any differences you faced through her? I mean, obviously, like Molly said, I'm, you know, we've done, we've had a very different lives, but at the core, I feel like emotionally we're very connected in a lot of ways. So emotionally, there was a lot of things that were harder to pull from and to, to dive into, but a lot of it kind of came naturally. I'm an, I'm an extremely emotional person to begin with. So I think a lot of it honestly too came from just like I just cared and felt for Molly so deeply. I think just all of like the crying and all of that just came pretty naturally. And we were also, I was really like, it was a lot of, a lot of work. And I think exhaustion also (laughs) helped me a little bit in in a way, but uh, yeah, I think when I'm so connected to something, it's, it's easy to pull from those emotions. Uh, But yeah, I mean, my goodness, it was a lot. I'm so happy that there was a range though of, it wasn't just heavy, 
heaviness all the way through there were so many fun light moments as well so it was fun and, and like especially my scenes with like Juliet who plays Viv that was really us just like having so much fun and we were saying today like she did so many fun ad libs and things that were it made it easy it made my job very easy for sure I will just say and I hope you're okay with me sharing this but like when I cast someone I'm also casting them and Maddie has very, had a very unusual upbringing and I'm putting normal in quotes. I never felt like a normal girl and I don't think Maddie's had a normal upbringing. So that feeling of feeling different from other people or isolation, I think Maddie just gets. Um, and, you know, a lot of Lindy is going through things that are internal and nonverbal and Maddie understands um, how to express herself. I mean, obviously as a dancer, um, what she can convey without a single word is so powerful. Thank you. I think a lot of the, the dissociation kind of scenes and, and those moments, I think, are, were familiar to me in a lot of ways. So, which was a lot to bring up those emotions, but I, I do think that all, a lot of it was familiar. Um, so to bring that back up was definitely like, I, I, I was able to tap into that pretty easily. I think. Yeah, I think both of us for different reasons know what it's like to have to leave your body to exist mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Absolutely. And on the theme of dissociation, I really want to touch on this scene. Um, there's a moment in the film where Lindy is at the doctor and he asks if students can come in and observe. And it's heartbreaking, but you, you both capture it with such care for the situation and for the character what was the pro what was the process like for you both to tap into that vulnerability on set while still making it feel safe? Despite the scene, it doesn't feel safe for her and you see it in her face. But then you have that moment where she does find an ally and the only female in the room. Yeah, uh, yeah all those scenes, um, I wanted to really put the emotion of it at the forefront, not the mechanics of what was going on. Um, on the examination table and that close up on of Maddie, the, this whole schedule was insane. I think I had two, may, maybe two takes of everything. And I don't, I can't explain what she did in that close up, but the whole crew after we cut, it was just, everyone was speechless. Mm, thank you. I think, I mean, you made every environment extremely safe. Like nothing felt uncomfortable or weird. Like, aside from I guess the scenes that we were doing they nothing felt too crazy or anything was scary but and I think too the way you played it like the close-ups on my feet I think all of that was really special to like I, I don't know I just think you captured it in a really amazing way and something a perspective that maybe a lot of people wouldn't go from but yeah I think that scene is so special it's so interesting to see how it plays too because in that moment on the page and, and when we were filming and watching it back it was so heavy and like tense to watch but like last night at the screening like so so many people were laughing laughing and I think it was out of uncomfortability but yeah it was interesting to see how different people take that scene and interpret it but I do think it was out of like laughing and like oh okay yeah like, in discomfort <laughs> totally. but I, I like to do that with audiences I like to confuse them totally. of whether they're supposed to be laughing or not and I think that scene starts with like nervous laughter and then you're like, oh no, this is sort of like a very aggressive medical violation. Yeah, totally. Uh, but however, I didn't want it to be um, without any hope. And that close up with the doctor, it's a woman of color, like to have her see Lindy in that moment was also me speaking to so much of my experiences with like white male doctors. And that doctor, it's a small role, but it's really important because it's like me saying like, you know, to have diversity inclusion in these spaces is so important for patients and their experiences. It really is. It really is. And I think too, um, oh no, I just lost my train of thought, but yes. <laughs> I and, um, can say something. Absolutely. Especially and also, I will say the gynecologist, the guy who was playing the doctor is oh an incredible gosh. actor. That seemed like way worse <laughs> for him. Maddie sat up and was like, I have like five pairs of Spanx on. I had, I had a, I, I had a yoga mat uh, <laughs> under a cave to me. So I was like, you are so fun. He was the most respectful and amazing and so sweet and like caring. And it was great that we had that. And 
everyone there was honestly it was so special to see even all of the crew as well so many of like the men there the straight men they were just like they were so gentle and kind with us and learned so much and I think it was really special to see that um the environment was just really loving and safe and like open which was really nice yeah, that makes me really happy to hear because at least my reaction with that scene is that I start crying. I yeah. felt for you. And yeah. especially when you have that single tear moment and after you say, like Lindy says, no, and it still happens. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people can relate, unfortunately, to that kind of violation. And <laughs> But there was a sense of hope, again, with that character, especially given the history of gynecology where so many women of color were abused to yeah. learn so much about the profession. So I thought that was just a nice touch. But um, to add a question to this, I wanted to know what advice would you give to people that could relate to that scene and trying to find that hope that you offered? I learned a lot through making this film about what my boundaries and rights are. Mm-hmm. And I don't think I was aware of the magnitude of the impact of what was said to me until I was shooting those scenes. Mm-hmm. I did have a doctor, like that doctor said in the movie, sort of off camera, he said, um, you know, you just use these dilators until you find a boyfriend. It took me until me shooting this movie to realize being told that by a male doctor as a teenager took the course of my life in a direction that I am still unpacking. Um, And I hope people who see this do not have the experience I had That is not okay. Doctors are doctors. They're not gods. You have rights as a patient. It is still your body. You have bodily autonomy. Um, And you are not a specimen. You're a human being. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I just remembered my train of thought. What I was saying is the amount, which is honestly very sad. The amount of women I, who I know have come up to you, but even last night at the after party saying I can relate so much to that scene to like literally just that just that dynamic is just like we've everyone's been there at some sort of capacity so that needs to change like very very much it's it's crazy it really is absolutely and to close this off this has been a lovely conversation and I'm glad this movie is out there but there was a time where it was still on the paper it was still a concept it was still something you were ruminating with and it was still something that um maddie you were still approaching this character that was about to form a part of you now that the movie is out looking back if you could give advice to yourselves at the very beginning of this project what would you say or to anyone attempting to tell a story like this one? Oh, i mean i kind of i i was i was super hesitant for myself to take this on, not because of the story. I wanted to do that immediately. I had no hesitation with that. I think just like, oh my gosh, am am I able to pull this off and do it in a respectful way for Molly and for any women or any person watching this film? I think it was a scary responsibility, but something that I learned from Lindy, I said it last night, like you are okay just the way you are. I think that's something that I really took from that. And like, I got through it and I did it and I'm proud of myself and I'm not normally proud of myself. So, um, yeah, she is so hard on herself and the most humble person. Um, I just trusted her with my life from the get go. It was just a feeling. Um, I think I would tell people that now that it's out, um, if you allow people to see who you are for the most part, they will, catch you and they will hold you in that Mm -hmm. space. And if they don't, it's okay. Like I am not going to be for everybody and I don't want to be. Um, I made this movie for the people who need it. And um, that's just most important to me. It's, uh, you know, if I'm understood by the people who need to understand me, then that's good for me. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much for sharing a part of yourself with us, Molly. And thank you to you, Maddie, for bringing it so beautifully to life. And congratulations again on the film. Thank you. So nice to talk to you.